Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me welcome you to Candidates Night presented by the Government Affairs Council of the Tuolumne County Chamber of Commerce. Candidates for the Tuolumne County Assessor Recorder, TUD's two-year Board of Directors with one vacancy, and TUD's four-year Board of Directors with two vacancies will be here to take part during this informative educational evening. My name is Michael Ayala. I will be your moderator and MC this evening. Now allow me to introduce our panelists. To my right is BJ Hansen, News Director at KVML 1450 AM. Margaret Davis, past chair and board, past chair of the board, excuse me, and Government Affairs Council vice chair, and Craig Cassidy, editor of the Union Democrat. Our timers are Wendy Gass, Tuolumne County Chamber of Commerce, 2014 president of the board, Carl Tucker, longtime member of our Government Affairs Council and most experienced timer. We, <laughs> I'm glad you got that. We would like to thank Clark Broadcasting and KVML 1450 AM for producing a live broadcast of tonight's event. Cable Channel 8 is also videotaping this event for broadcast at a later date and time. The candidates have all been informed of today's agenda and will be seated or have been seated by a random drawing of numbers. I'll read a very brief introduction of each candidate, basically the name and the position that's on their ballot um, followed by the candidates who will each have one minute and 30 seconds to make their opening statement. When responding to questions, first to answer will be seat number one. The first candidate to respond to a question will have one minute and 30 seconds to answer, while the remaining candidates responding to the same question will have one minute. At the end of the question answer period, each candidate will then have two minutes to make a closing statement. Our timers will help the candidates keep track of time. They will be able to see the timer and the remaining time. At the end of your allotted time, I urge each candidate to wrap, wrap up your response in short order. We'll just leave it at that. There are index cards in the back of the room for the audience to write their questions and submit them to me. They must be legible. I don't see as well as I used to easy to understand, and be a little bit different than what has been asked or may be asked. Your question may make it to the panel, but please keep in mind the pan panel members already have several questions before them, and time must be available for an additional question to be posed to the candidates on the dais. Finally, some admonitions or ground rules. The mics are hot, do not forget. So when you're changing seats or positions, those mics do not go off. So if you say anything under your breath, they may pick you up and it may go out. So just keep that in mind. And number two, this is a family-friendly show. No cursing or rude <laughs> language. Candidates, this is not a one-on-one, -on -one, so address the panelists and the audience and those listening from their homes. Now let us begin with a few words from our Registrar of Voters, Debbie Batista. First, thank, um, the ch I want to thank the Chamber for giving me the opportunity to get out some dates and statistics for all of the voters in Tuolumne County. Um, probably the most important date that's coming up is the last date of register to vote is October 20th. Your registration card needs to be postmarked by October 20th. One can go on the Secretary of State's webpage, www.sos.ca.gov, and register electronically. There's registration cards in the back for those of us in the audience. If you have changed your name, if you have moved, if you will be 18 on or before November 4th, please register to vote and get those cards into us by the 20th. Um, the other thing is that the vote by mail, vote by mail ballots are going to be dropped this weekend and voters should start receiving them by about next Wednesday or Thursday. So remember to Open up your vote by mail ballots, all of your information, the candidate statement, the vo voting polling places, and all of that kind of information, if you vote by mail, is going to be in your ballot. You will not receive a county pamphlet. If you go to the polling places, you will receive a um, pamphlet, and those should have actually been dropped last weekend. Um, the last day to request a vote by mail 
um, ballot is October 28th. Um, and the last day that we're going to probably recommend, and BJ is wonderful about motherlodejob.com and also the Union Democrat, all of these dates will be out there too. But the last date that we're going to recommend you mail in your ballot is going to be October 20th. But remember, the only place that has early voting is to South Green Street at the elections office. And starting Monday, people can start voting by mail downstairs um, all the way through 8 o'clock on November 4th, Election Day. And the only Saturday that we're open is November 1st, and we're open between 9 and 1. So if one wants to drop off their ballots and or vote, that our office will be open. And again, thank the chamber for giving me this opportunity to get the dates and the times out there. Thank you. So, the candidates for assessor recorder that I will introduce are Kanan Whitman, appraiser, business owner, and Michael Dambacker, appraisal, business owner. With that, Kanan, your opening statement. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming out tonight, and thank you to Tuolumne County Chamber of Commerce for putting this event together. I would like to go ahead and use this time to tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm a husband and father and have been involved in our community through a couple of uh, ways. I've served as president of the Ponderosa Hills Recreation Club, as a Sunday school teacher at my local church, and as a member of the Sonora Sunrise Rotary Club. I also own a small business with my wife in downtown Sonora where we employ three people. And as someone who owns a small business and works as an appraiser within the ass assessor's office, I'm excited to be here tonight to discuss all the things we can do to help small businesses in our county, such as a change to the minimum assessment requirement and also the adoption of Prop 90. I'm also looking forward to discussing the upcoming challenges the next assessory quarter will be facing, such as the implementation of a new tax software system and the handling of over 8,000 properties with decline in value status. Thank you. And Michael Dambacker. Good evening. My name is Michael Dambacker. Yes. My name is Michael Dambacker. I'm a candidate for the Assessor Reporter's Office. Michael, turn it on, please. I guess you turned it off. Good evening. My name is Mike Dambacker. I'm a candidate for the Tuolumne County Assessor Recorder's Office. I'm a local from a local family here and a lifelong resident of Tuolumne County. I've shown stability in this community. I've been very involved in this community. The premise of my campaign are three main points. Number one is my education. Number two is my qualifications. And number three is my experience. My education, I have a business, a business administration degree under qualifications. I'm a state certified general appraiser with the state of California under experience. For five years, I was a senior appraiser for the Tuolumne County Assessor's Office. I was five years, I was a staff appraiser for El Capitan National Bank. And for the past 18 years, I've run my own business, Dambach Appraisal Services. It's been a very successful operation. I've been over 4,000 appraisals done in that time. Some of the things I like to see happen during, during my term is a public outreach. I know it's knocking on doors, talking to people. A lot of people don't even understand what this office is really all about, how it operates, how it functions. I think we need a public outreach program on that. I'm a proponent of Proposition 13, and I will fight all attacks against Proposition 13. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ready, Carl? All right, for the first question to Kanan Whitman, BJ Hansen, KVML. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Whitman, when it comes to the Office of Assessor Recorder, is there a way to modernize the office and make it more efficient? There are several things that we can do. The first one, an event, we're coming to it. The first one is going to be uh, the implementation of a new tax software system. That'll happen sometime within the next four, maybe eight years. But the other things that we can really also focus on is uh, uh, The modernize, uh, I guess the modernization of the uh, business property uh, system, well, the, of the new tax software system. And then also there are some policies that we can do. The first one is a change to the minimum assessment requirement, which would make our office a lot more cost and time efficient at the same time. Sorry. 
Thank you. And Mr. Dambacker, same question. Is there a way to modernize the office and make it more efficient? Well, I'm sure there is. There's a system in place that are called the Crest system. And from people I've talked to that's been working in the office since I've been there, and that was 25 years ago, and that's about the time the system came in place, there's several ways of modernizing it, but it all boils down to one thing, money. And the office has been trying for years to, to, to get the funds to put a system in place, and it's not happening. I think what needs to happen is to kind of look outside the box and, and work with other departments that need to be modernized and go in a system that will work with other, uh, other offices within the county. And that way we can, we can probably get something put together. So it's, it's, there's definitely answers out there, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dollar problem. And I think, like I say, combining with other offices, we can go somewhere with this. Okay, hold on, Margaret. I'm waiting for the timekeeper to set the clock, and he's doing good. And the next question, when we're ready, will be by Margaret Davis to Michael Dambacher. All right, many people do not understand why the assessor's recorder is elected rather than appointed. Do you think it matters if the position is elected rather than appointed, and why? It matters very much. There was a, there was a, a time, a long time ago, when all of, all these different offices were were elected offices. But in the consolidation of these offices, it became appointed by the board of supervisors uh, or the county administrator. Now, what happens? Why is elected important? It's important because it's a check and balance system. You have to be independent. Yet you still have to have the, 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 the wherewithal to work with other departments. But you need to be independent, and that's the reason this office has been an elected office for all these years. Thank you. Kanan, do you want the same question? I mean, uh, you want me to read it again? No, it's fine. I, okay. I got it. Margaret? Oh. I have a little. Okay, go. I also believe that the office should be an elected position because it does work immediately with the public, and the public needs to have an influence over that position. And uh, it, it is something that, uh, that does affect every single taxpayer and a property owner in Tuolumne County. And uh, it is something that should be elected uh, just because there, just as Mike said, there does need to be those checks and balances. Thank you. As soon as the timer is ready, Craig Cassidy will ask the next question. Go. Um, the county assessor is also in charge of the county's archives. I wonder if either of you, or, well, I guess came first, um, has given much thought to uh, how this department will be administered? Yeah, so the duty of the archives is to preserve, protect, and index Tuolumne County's written history, and it's also there to set up a file management system for all the other departments with for the county, uh, such as, you know, the files that are important to the county but not needed on a daily basis. They are filed at the archives department. And then there's also some other things that the archives department does do that does bring market value to Tuolumne County, such as it, it does have a lot of valuable records, such as uh, uh, buildings that were uh, built prior to the 1940s. Those will still be on record in the archives, and there are a lot of builders that can go ahead and receive credit for that information that they're able to produce when it comes time to applying for permits. And Michael right. Dambacher, when the timer's to, ready. You need to repeat the question? Or? No, that's fine. Right. Um, I'm glad you brought up a question about the county archives because that's, that's my passion. I've, like I say, I was born and raised in this county, and I have a passion for, for this county and the archives, the preservation of the archives. I work directly with uh, Charlie Dyer. He's the archivist of Tuolumne County currently. And I've worked on some programs with him. I spend time in the, in the county archives. Uh, there's, there's a program that he's working on right now. It's called Heritage Tourism. And it basically brings tourists into this county in relationship with the archives and historical mementos. So it's a very important function of the assessor's office, and it's something that needs to be retained. And I'm, I'm a very big proponent of the archives staying within the, the assessor's office. Thank you. Thank you. And when Carl is ready with the timing, uh, the next question is going to be from Margaret Davis to Michael Dambacher. Margaret, go ahead. If assessor or recorder were an appointed position, 
Do you believe the Board of Supervisors would consider your education, background, and experience sufficient to qualify you for such an appointment? Please explain your answer. Well, I don't, I don't, I wish it was not an appointing position, but if it was an appointing position, like you said, absolutely, like any job, I think in education there should be a criteria for the job. Uh, whether it's the education, a college degree, what that college degree is in, mine's in business administration, uh, your, your certifications, do you have the proper licensing to, to evaluate property, uh, experience, have you, have, is this something you're, you're starting out doing or you've done? A funny thing just happened, they, the assistant assessor just retired and they just hired a new assistant assessor. And the qualifications for the assistant assessor is much, much steeper than it is for the assessor. And the funny thing about it, I do qualify to be the assistant assessor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to see? Yeah. Okay, Margaret. Okay. If assessor recorder were in appointed position, do you believe the Board of Supervisors would consider your education, background, and experience sufficient to qualify you for such an appointment? Please explain, explain your answer. I do believe so, and the reason for that is because I do have experience within the office as an appraiser. I also have experience in the private sector as an appraiser, and I also have experience in the real world as a small business owner. And then uh, I also have a vision for the office too. There are a couple things that I would like to see our office do. The first one is I'd like to see our office advocate for the adoption of Prop 90, which would strengthen Prop 13 protections for seniors by allowing them to transfer their base year value in our county. And also, I would like to see our office become a lot more cost and time efficient. And we can do that by making a change to our minimum assessment requirements, which would make our office more cost and time efficient, and it would also provide tax relief to over 400 small businesses. Thank you. All right, I think it's that time for closing statement, and we'll start with Kanan and then go to Michael Dambacher. I'd like to close with telling you all the things I will work for as assessor recorder. I will work to make the office more cost and time efficient while providing tax relief to small businesses. We can do this by making a change to the minimum assessment requirements, and I will also work uh, I will also work to strengthen Prop 13 protections for seniors by allowing them to transfer their base year value in our county. I believe this is a good idea because it will create an incentive for retirees to choose Tuolumne County. And what follows a lot of retirees are their pensions and 401ks, which is all money from outside of our county that then comes into our county and is spent locally. My top priorities as assessor recorder will be to make sure each property is fairly and accurately assessed. And uh, <laughs> and to make sure we are doing all that we can to protect the public from identity theft, such as removing personal and private information from publicly accessible documents. And as an appraiser within the assessor's office, I am aware and prepared to meet the upcoming challenges the next assessor recorder will face, such as the implementation of a new tax software system and the handling of over 8,000 properties with decline in value status. Lastly, I do have the office experience the management experience, and the appraisal experience to lead the assessor recorder's office in a professional and cost-effective manner. I am endorsed by the current assessor recorder, Ken Catano, the former uh, assistant assessor, Kevin Townsend, and I am also supported by the Tuolumne County Association of Realtors and the Stanislaus Tuolumne County uh, Central Labor Council. Thank you. And I respectfully ask for your vote on November 4th. For more information, you can visit my website at voteforwhitman.com. Thank you. Thank you, Cannon. And Michael, when we're ready. Sure. You're asking yourself, why vote for Mike Dambacher? What does Mike Dambacher bring to the table? Well, like I mentioned in my opening statement, I bring the education, the business education. I bring the experience. I've worked 25 years in the, uh, 18 years in the private sector and 25 years in the, in the whole appraisal situation. My licensing qualifies me to appraise all types of properties. It's the highest license in the state of California issues. So if someone comes into the, the assessor's office, someone like Hetch Hetchy or Walmart, and they're pounding the table on, I don't like my values, I need somebody to look at it, I have that licensing. I have that experience. I deal with corporate lawyers. I've been doing that for 25 years. An appraiser, too, in the office is not qualified to do that. I want to use my experience as a business owner to meet the challenges of this office. I have extensive knowledge of the appraisal industry. I have extensive appraisal background. 
Like we mentioned on the archive question, I have a passion for this county. The archives portion of this office is very, very important to me. I intend to preserve that and keep it rolling. The county is in a unique position. You have someone that has an appraiser or an, someone going for the assessor's office, recorder's office, that has public experience. They worked at the assessor's office. They were senior appraiser at the assessor's office. Then they went out and gathered 18 years of private, successful business work as an appraisal firm. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Kanan Whitman, Michael Dambacker, both candidates for assessor recorder. For our radio audience, you're listening to the Tuolumne County Chamber of Commerce Candidates Night. We're going to take a three minute break and return here on the Mother Loads News Station, AM 1450 KVML. Thank you.